Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking to you about all of the books that I ended up reading in December of 2021. Baby, baby. First off, I want to say if you hear a power saw, my dad is power sawing, okay? <laughs> and I can't do anything about it, that's what he does. I can't tell him not to stop and so he's power sawing while I'm filming, it just so happens, there you go, it just so happens happen at the same time, unfortunately. <laughs> I hope it's not too bothersome. I'm very sorry if you're bothered by it. I have to, I have to film today, okay? <laughs> so, um, I know December was a little bit of a while away, but I'm just now getting to filming my wrap up. I ended up reading 19 books in December. Three of those were rereads, and then the other 16 were books I read for the first time. So first I want to talk about my three rereads really, really, really fast because these are like favorites of mine and you'll already know my opinions on them if you are not new to this channel. If you are new to this channel, go look at my Goodreads reviews about these books because they're probably more in depth than what I'm about to talk about. Um, but first, I of course have Never Seduces Scott by Maya Banks. I had some of my close friends here on booktube reading this book for the first time towards the end of the year and I was just like, I want to reread that really badly. I'm in the mood to. Graham in this book is everything to me. If you don't know, this is about Eveline and Graham. They're from rivaling Highlander clans and they're put in an arranged marriage. Eveline is deaf. Nobody knows that she's deaf. They just think that she is touched in the head. Um, and then Graham um, has always wanted a wife and children, but he realizes that Eveline may not be able to give him those things because he doesn't want to pressure or put anything onto this woman who might not have the brain faculties to consent to anything um so he's like really down in the dumps that he maybe can't have the life he's always wanted but then he meets Eveline and he realizes that this woman isn't touched she can understand what I'm saying to her what is going on and Eveline can read people's lips nobody knows this though and so once she goes back to Graham's keep with him uh he slowly starts to unravel what is actually going on with Eveline and that she's actually deaf it's just so good Graham is one of the ultimate book boyfriends he is incredibly sweet kind understanding he's everything I would want in a man honestly and then I did reread uh the first two books in the Ice Planet Barbarian series I've been having trouble sleeping if you don't know I have really bad insomnia and so some of the things that I like to do to help me fall asleep is to listen to some of my favorite audiobooks, I fall asleep listening to them. I decided to start, of course, with the OG and re-listen to Ice Planet Barbarians. And um, yeah, if you didn't know, this is an alien romance series where human women get crushed on this ice planet and they fall in love with big blue aliens. I um, mean, each book is about a different couple. So this one's about Georgie and Vectal. I just think this is a great comfort read. Of course, I gave this five stars. I also gave Never Seduce a Scott five stars, obviously. And then I also re-listened to the second book in the series, which is uh, Barbarian Alien. Um, this one I gave four stars just because this one is not my favorite in the series. It's not. I'm not that big of a fan of <laughs> Rahash and Liz in their individual story. I'm much more of a fan of them throughout the series when they're side characters, not when they're the main couple. I don't know why. That's just how I feel. That's my mood. So this one is not my favorite in the series, but I, of course, love this world and will read reread this book for a long time. Okay, so now we're going to be getting into the books that I read for the first time in December. I'm going to go in chronological order. If you didn't notice, I didn't do a mid-month wrap-up for December, and that's because I had a really bad flare-up with my chronic illness in December, and I didn't have the time to. Um, so there are more books than I would want to talk about. <laughs> like, I want to condense it more. That's why I tried to implement mid-month wrap-ups into my channel. Those will be coming back in 2022, um, but for now, we're just going to be talking about all of them in this video, so that's why it might be a little bit longer than I anticipated. So the first book that I ended up reading in December was A Tale As Old As Time by Ellie Hay. This is a Audible original, and you could only listen to it if you have Audible or Audible Plus. This is just a very short novella about our heroine who has a cat. She adopts a cat because she's pretty lonely. She adopts this cat, and then her neighbor next door has this dog that won't stop barking and the cat is kind of scared of it and so she keeps confronting her neighbor and it's like you need to shut your dog up because he's bugging me and my cat and we can't sleep and so then the guy who's her neighbor complains to her about her cat meowing constantly and so the two of them leave uh, notes in each other's doors complaining about each other's pets until one day both of their pets escape together and they have to go on this little journey to go and find them throughout their city this is great to listen to a cute enemies to lovers short story um i definitely obviously wanted more from it i think that's what my issue was i wanted more it's just too short for me personally some novellas i can get behind and feel like the author 
wrapped up their story perfectly and I didn't need any more or like I didn't feel like more was needed. Would I want more? Yes. That's what sets apart novellas for me and I feel like more was needed in this story. I'm gonna start also in my wrap-ups listing the tropes that are in this book in case you are interested. So in this book we have books with pets obviously. We have a brooding hero, it's a funny romance, it's hate to love, and it's a neighbor's romance. I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. It was a cute fun pick-me-up. Then I ended up reading Stocking Stuffers by Erin McClellan. This is the first book in the So Over the Holidays series and this is definitely my favorite Christmas romance that I've ever read. Probably because of how hot it is, honestly. <laughs> so this is the romance between Sasha and Perry. Sasha ends up getting stuck in this B&B &B during a work trip because there was a giant snowstorm, she can't leave. And so Perry is the younger brother to the owner of the B&B &B, and he is absolutely in love with Christmas. It's the Christmas season and Sasha can't stand Christmas. Um, she got left at the altar during her Christmas wedding. And so Christmas is a very hard time for her. Um, but then they end up meeting and realizing how attracted they are to the other person. So they're like, hmm, while we're stuck together in this B&B, &B, uh, do you maybe want to get together, if you know what I mean, and spend some fun time together? Uh, Perry starts to fall for Sasha fast and tries to convince her that he wants something more out of this relationship than just a weekend fling. However, Sasha does not do commitment because of what happened to her in her past. And so she is like, sorry, no, I'm leaving after this. So the two of them are getting together while also having conflicting feelings for one another throughout the process. And ooh, this one was just so stinking good. This has one of the best like grovel take me back scenes I've ever read. I thought it was so amazing. If you want a great Christmassy grumpy sunshine book, read this one. You don't need to be in the Christmas spirit or it to be Christmas time to read this book. This one's just hot and fun. Like it is so good. I need to read more of these books in this series because each book is about a different like holiday. I read this one, the Christmas one and the 4th of July one. I need to read, I think there's a New Year's Eve one and then there's also a Valentine's Day one. I need to read those too. So there's a bunch of tropes in here. We have book lovers. The hero is a book lover. Um, it's a Christmas book. It's a cinnamon roll hero, a damaged heroine. There's forced proximity, groveling, grumpy sunshine. The hero falls first. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a one night stand to more. And it's a part of a sibling series. It takes place during a snowstorm and it has a sweet hero. I know that was a lot of tropes, <laughs> but I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a five out of five stars. Next, I read Lover Unveiled by J.R. Ward. This is book number 19 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I am trying to get caught up. I am almost there. This is a vampire romance series, if you didn't know, about a secret society of vampires. And the Black Dagger Brotherhood is a group of vampires that protect the vampire race from these evil creatures. So this one centers around um, Savage. And I thought this one was just okay. I honestly wanted to put the book down like 25% of the way through. Like it was a struggle for me to pick this book up and it's on audio. And like, I just, I didn't want to listen to it, honestly. But throughout the rest of the book, towards the end, it definitely picked up pace, but I felt like it took too long to pick up pace for me. So I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So the tropes in here are of course vampires, there's a brooding hero, and it's a paranormal romance. And this one's just honestly okay for me. It's not my favorite Black Tiger Brotherhood book by any means. Next, I read Sweet Captivity by Julia Sykes. This was available for me to listen to on Audible Plus. Unfortunately, I did not like this one. Um, I think I have an issue with captivity or kidnapping romances where you do not see the switch from hate to love. Like the person who's being kidnapped obviously hates the person that kidnapped them. And a lot of the times they obviously switch their opinions and are like, ooh, I'm starting to fall in love with you. Kind of like Stockholm syndrome, whatever. I love kidnapping romances. Like some of them are some of my all time favorites. However, I don't like the ones where you don't see the shift gradually. Like one day you wake up and you're in love with them. Like I don't understand that at all. So our heroine ends up getting kidnapped by this mafia boss dude. So her kidnapper ends up giving her to his brother Andres. Um, to do with him what he will and to try and break her to work for him because um, she works for the FBI, I think. And so she ends up falling in love with Andres, even though she hates him at the beginning. There's definitely some non-consensual stuff going on here. I just, I think I have a hard time loving heroes that are the same throughout the story. Like he does not change whatsoever. He's still his broody self throughout the entire book. He doesn't change whatsoever. And it just it like peeves me. I'm like, you should have grown. He didn't grow at all. And like the way he treated her, I just did not care for at all. I just, I don't understand why the heroine fell in love with this hero. Like, I don't get it. All he did was tie her up a few times. He gave her some comic books. <laughs> like, I just did not see the progression to love at all. I ended up giving this book a two out of five stars. Next, I listened to A Wallflower Christmas by Lisa Kleipas. This is book number 4.5, part of the Wallflower series. So you have to read 
the four regular books in the Wallflower series to, I feel like, enjoy this one as much as you should. So you get to see the past Wallflower couples in this book around Christmas time, as well as a new couple that pops up. So this romance is between Rafe and Natalie. Rafe is set to marry Natalie's cousin, and so they go on a little Christmas vacation to one of the Wallflower... one of the Wallflowers' house. Um, like a Christmas vacation kind of thing where they stay there for a while like a house party. And so while they're staying there, Rafe realizes that he may be in love with Natalie, not her cousin. This was just such a joy to read, especially around Christmas time. You don't need to read it around Christmas time, but I feel like I got a lot of enjoyment out of it by reading it around Christmas time because it was so whimsical and holiday-esque and I just adored this. This book is obviously a Christmas book. It's a forbidden romance. It has great banter. It's a historical romance. There's longing. There's romance with babies in here because you see all the wallflower couples have have their babies around um and it's a winter read for sure i ended up giving this book five out of five stars i loved this and i thought lisa claypost did a great job with this book next i ended up reading a favorite for me i read a nun for the viking warrior by lucy morris okay lucy morris has come out with two books both of them are viking romances and i have loved both of them. <laughs> so this is an, an unlikely opposite attract romance between Amy and Jorand. Amy is a woman who is about to take her vows to be a nun, but then the day before or a couple days before she does so, the nunnery and the church, uh, the doors basically get knocked down by Jorand and his men. He claims that he has been tasked by the king to marry her and for them to go live on her father's land. And she is terrified this woman was about to be a nun like a nun and now she's about to marry this giant viking man <laughs> ever since her childhood and living with her very abusive father she has vowed never to get married and never have a husband she never ever ever wants to be under the thumb of a man ever again so the two of them obviously have to get married and they struggle throughout this book trying to live together and communicate with one another. Their romance is slow and passionate and it is completely 100% worth the read. I adore this book. Jurand is a Viking hero that falls head over heels in love with Amy and it is so beautiful to read about. I loved it. He's kind of like this broody, has his walls up kind of guy at the beginning and towards the end. He, his walls are completely shattered. She has broken all of them. Their romance was so incredibly sweet. I love this one. I love this one more than the other one I read by Lucy Morris. If you want a good Viking romance, this is definitely one to read. The historical aspects in here with Vikings was really cool as well. I know that Lucy Morris probably did a lot of research for this book. This arc was sent to me by Lucy Morris. Specifically, she reached out to me to send me an arc. And I'm so incredibly grateful because I adored this and I need more people to read it because it was so good. There is trigger warning in here for mention of suicide and abuse, so just be aware. And the tropes in here, there are a few. <laughs> you have an arranged marriage, uh, books with pets, there is a horse that our heroine is very attached to. Um, there's a brooding hero, a damaged hero, damaged heroine. It's a historical romance. It's a married couple romance. Never been kissed. That scene where he kisses her for the first time is so stinking good. There's obviously nuns in this book. It's an opposites attract. There's Vikings in here and there is a wedding in here. I love this one. Five out of five stars for freaking sure. Probably my favorite read of December. Next I read a booktube, book internet favorite. We have Dipped in Holly by Dana Isley. Is that how you pronounce her name? I'm so sorry if I mispronounced it. Okay, so this is a very short, hot, Christmassy related novella between Nick and newly single Holly. Holly and her horrible boyfriend end up breaking up while they're at Nick's bar and Nick kind of ends up saving her. Like Nick overhears the breakup and realizes that he wants Holly all to himself and so he does just that. He takes her up to his apartment above the bar and they have a very hot, night together that is super fun to read about i really like this one this couple was super hot there's a lot of chemistry between them it was very entertaining to read about the tropes in here it's a christmas romance it's an age gap it's a novella it's on kindle unlimited and there is an alpha hero for sure in here i gave this book a four out of five stars next i read parental guidance by avery flynn this is the first book in the ice knight series this series takes place after the hardigan series which i've read all those books so I kind of understand and know all these side characters. So if you wanna know about the side characters, I recommend reading the Hardigans before this one. So this is the fake dating romance between Caleb and Zara. Caleb is a hockey player who has been involved in a public scandal and to make his image better, he's advised to download and promote this new dating app. He has to commit to five dates with a specific person while promoting it to the public, while also making sure to be fully into his date. 
And so Zara just so happens to be a said date and she needs a fake boyfriend for an entirely different reason, which you read about when you read the book. And so while they're on their first date, the two of them realize that they're not actually on these dates to find a real relationship. They're trying to do different things. So they decide to fake date and pretend to be into each other. And of course, while they're in the fake dates, they end up falling in love. Unfortunately, this one was just okay. Honestly, I had to read the entire, entire summary from my review because I don't remember a thing about this book. I didn't even know this was a fake dating. I forgot. This book is not really all that memorable to me. I did like the dyslexia representation though. I thought it was super cool to read about in the story because you don't read a lot about characters who have dyslexia in romance books. I think I've only read one other book that has a representation in it. Um, so the tropes in here, you have books with pets. The heroine has a very adorable Great Dane. It's a dating app romance, fake dating, great banter. There's a height difference between the two of them. It's a hockey romance. Romance with Disability Rep, the hero has dyslexia and is obviously a sports romance because it deals with hockey. I ended up giving this book just three out of five stars. It was just okay. Then I ended up reading Love Beyond Words by Emma Scott. This is the first book in the City Lights series. Okay, so I've been wanting to read more of Emma Scott's backlist because I adore Emma Scott so much. She's written some of my favorite romance books of all time. Um, So I wanted to go back to her first book. I believe this was the first book she ever published if I'm not mistaken. So this is the romance between Natalie and Julian. Natalie works at this coffee shop and Julian is a writer that comes in to write in her coffee shop almost every single day. They end up falling in love with each other. Um, their romance is slow to start, but Kuthi picks up into something passionate and totally unforgettable to them. However, there is somebody who is trying to break them up from this relationship and does not want them to be together and will take drastic measures to make sure that doesn't happen. The book was really promising at first. I liked the couple at first. I thought it was a little cliche and very cringy at points just because like some of the things that they said to each other just wasn't my thing. I don't really like celebrity romances all that much. There are very few celebrity romances that I enjoy. And so the hero in here is kind of a celebrity because he's a very popular author. And I just didn't care for that part of the book at all. Like, I don't think she did great on it, which is weird because one of my other favorite books by Emma Scott is Full Tilt and the heroine there is like a rock star. And that's one of my favorite romances of all time. And that one's fine. I love that one. This one did not float my boat at all. I found them lackluster compared to all the other couples that I've read by Emma Scott, honestly. You might like this book more than me if you've never read an Emma Scott book before, who knows? Also the whole part about someone meddling in their relationship and making sure they're not together kind of thing really peeved me. I did not care. I don't want a romance book where one person is trying to break up the couple. Like, I don't want that. I also don't want their point of view at all. No, no, no. And 50% of this book was in this person's point of view. And I did not care for that at all. This book did not mesh well with me, unfortunately. Um, there's trigger warning here for guns, drugging, and hospitals. If hospitals are not your thing, there is a portion of this book where someone is in a hospital. The shrubs in here, there's an author, a writer, um, they're both book lovers. There's a hidden identity, grief, and it's on Kindle Unlimited. Um, I did not care for this one really at all. I'm, I am sorry. So I gave this a two out of five stars. Talk about another disappointing read. I read Claimed by L. Kennedy. This is the first book in her post-apocalyptic romance series called Outlaws. Essentially, Earth is very different now. It's a post-apocalyptic setting. Everyone lives for themselves and fends for themselves in this time. So this is a romance between Connor and Hudson. Hudson is running away from her previous life when one day at a bar, she comes across Connor and his group of men. They reluctantly decide to bring her into their group and Connor and her have this kind of like friends with benefits situation with each other because they're very highly attracted to one another, but Connor does not want a relationship at all. But of course their feelings grow over time and he has to admit to himself that there's more here than just physical attraction. This is my first Al Kennedy. And I'm not sure if I wanna read any more of her books, honestly. I feel like her writing is very new adult-esque and I'm kind of going away from that. I don't know. I just, I did not really care for this. I don't really, I don't think I connect well with her writing style, especially since it is in third person. I don't know, sometimes authors write in third person with romance books and it doesn't really do it for me. It just doesn't. I think I prefer first person narratives or first person point of views. If there are romance books done in third person, it takes a special author for me to love it, you know? And that's honestly just a personal preference of mine. I liked the concept of this world. I love the concept of this book, this dystopian world that L. Kennedy has made up. I honestly though cared more about the side characters in here than the actual couple. I just didn't care about them. Even though the scenes were kind of hot, there's some, um, MFM scenes in here too. I don't know, the, the the connection between these two just didn't work for me, honestly. I just, I didn't really care for this. Trigger warnings in here are guns, knives, death, and murder. 
Um, the tropes in here, there's a brooding hero, a damaged hero, hidden identity, it's post-apocalyptic slash dystopian romance, and the hero is a widower. I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars, but I think I might bump it down to a two because the more that I think about it, the more that I don't like it. Okay, we're gonna move on to a happier note. I read When She Was Naughty by Tessa Dare. This is a Christmassy novella. So this is the romance between Chloe and Julian. Chloe and her family have a Christmas party every year and Chloe's parents decide to invite Justin. However, Chloe decides to play a little bit of a prank on Justin because they do not get along and she claims that Justin is this cold, broody guy. So she decides to play a prank on him by telling him that it's like an ugly waistcoat party. And so he wears this ridiculous waistcoat um, that uh, Chloe made for him, telling him that everyone's gonna wear one. And then he walks in and he's the only one wearing one. <laughs> I wish though that this was a full length book because it was so funny and cute and amazing. And once the hero kind of like reveals his feelings for her, she's like, oh, I did not know you felt that way about me. And so she takes a little bit to reflect on her own feelings and she realizes that she may be in love with him as well. And it was so stinking cute. I just wanted more though. I wanted a full length book. The tropes in here, there's great banter. It's hate to love. The hero definitely falls first. It's a historical romance. There's longing and it is a novella. I ended up giving this book a four and five stars just because I wanted more, 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 more from it. <laughs> Next I read Mine Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas. Um, now this book is the first book in the Hathaway series. So this book and then the rest of the books on this list are a little hard for me to remember. So I'm gonna be reading some of the, some parts of the summaries here because I was currently reading this book when I had my really bad flare up. And if you don't know, uh, people with POTS have really bad memory loss and brain fog. Um, and so I don't remember almost anything that happens in this book. I do remember the feeling that I had though while reading it. All I know is that this book is about Cam and Amelia and I remember loving it. Um, if you wanna know about this book more and the first book in the Hathaway series, I recommend maybe going to Goodreads or watching someone else's review because I honestly, I can't remember what happens in here at all, honestly. Um, I know we meet Cam in previous in the previous series by Lisa Kleypas, The Wallflowers, and I loved him in that. And so this is his own romance story. And I do remember how he definitely falls for his familia and will do anything to have her. He was very swoony and I loved him. I don't remember what happened, unfortunately. I'm gonna have to reread it very soon. I just finished book two in this series and I loved it. So I'll be able to talk about that book more in my January wrap up. And so then I decided to read How the Monster Stole Me on Christmas Eve, A Christmas Monster Romance by Jade Price. So this is a very fun and short Christmassy novella inspired by the Grinch, obviously, except in this one, the Grinch is tall, muscular, and very attractive looking. This one was honestly hilarious. <laughs> I am interested to look into Grinch retellings to see if there's any more of them because that'd be hilarious. I think the writing is the thing that got me on this. I, I feel like it needed more editing and maybe more polishing. It just wasn't something that I easily flowed through. And there are just some things I wanted more things touched on. So like Cindy, our heroine, she ends up getting kidnapped by um, the hero in here. I forget his name, but it's not the Grinch. It's like a different G name. She ends up getting kidnapped by him on Christmas Eve, obviously like the title. And he says he's been watching her for years. And like, we didn't get any information as to why he's been doing that. How has he been doing that? What is going on? Like, why has he been watching her for years? Why are you kidnapping her on this one night? If you've watched her for years, I just feel like we're missing parts of the story and other aspects too. Um, but the tropes in here, it's obviously a Christmas book. The hero falls first. It's a kidnapping story. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a monster romance and it is a novella. I enjoyed this one for what it was. So I gave it a three out of five stars. Next, I started a new favorite historical romance series. I'm currently reading the third book in the series. So I'm gonna talk about the first two books that I read in this series in this video. So first we have how to Capture a Countess by Karen Hawkins. Oh my word, I loved this one. So this is about Rose and Lord Sin. They met at a party six years ago and Lord Sin and Rose were kind of like flirting. She was like 16 at the time. He kisses her and she gets a little overwhelmed and ends up accidentally pushing him into a pond. And so he's like in this pond in front of everybody. He gets very embarrassed and she runs off with her, I think grandmother or aunt, and they haven't seen each other or spoken to each other for six years. He's been trying to track her down for all that time because he wants retribution. And so they come across each other six years after this incident at a house party and Sin plans for revenge. And the way he plans on doing that is by seducing this woman and ruining her. But there are many obstacles in his way, like meddling family members, cute, adorable pugs. <laughs> and of course, the fact that he may be falling in love with this woman. I loved this. I loved this so much. This book is 
funny and is entertaining. Every part of this book I think was perfect. I think this author is amazing. The rest of the series is perfect as well. I think the third book that I'm reading right now could possibly be my favorite in the series, honestly. The audiobook was great to listen to. The first two books in this series have an audiobook. The third book doesn't. That's why I'm take, it's taking me a while to read through the third book. This is the book that I've been waiting for when it comes to couples playing pranks on each other because this couple has great banter. They play so many pranks on each other. And it's everything that I've been wanting. Remember when To Have It to Hoax came out by Martha Waters? Like it was talking about how this married couple kept playing pranks on each other and trying to do all these things for each other. This is the type of pranks I was wanting. Like they are so funny and cute and they end up falling for each other throughout all of it. It is so good. This is a new favorite historical romance of mine and I feel like the series is going to be my new favorite historical romance series ever, quite possibly, because it is so good. I need more people to read this book and this series in general. In this trope, you have books with pets. There's like six pugs in here. Their names are like Feeny, Meeny, Minnie, Finny, and Benny, and then there's Randolph. <laughs> Um, and they're getting all into each other's businesses like they're getting into the couple's businesses and we'll like walk around them and like sniff out them out and like sleep with them and be in like funny scenes with them and it is so cute. There's a brooding hero on here. There's great banter. It's hate to love on the hero side at least. Uh, there's a height difference. Um, it's a historical romance. He's a rake. She's a ruined heroine ever since that night at the pond. And um, it's a sibling series. The rest of the books are all about the Balfour sisters. And there is a time jump because at the beginning, it takes place in the time when they first met and then jumps to six years. Um, I love this one, five out of five stars. Please read this book and this series in general. Another novella that I ended up reading is Breaking the Bully by Jessica Kane. I just needed a little pick me up because I was kind of like struggling through reads. I don't really read all that much when I have a flare up or a health emergency. So um, I decided to pick this one up and I'm so glad that I did. So this is the romance between Moore and Ali. During their early years of high school, the two of them were pining over each other constantly and like stealing glances at each other and constantly watching the other person, but never admitting their feelings. But then one day, Ali completely stops talking to Moore and he has no idea why. So what does he do? He starts to bully her to try and get her to notice him again. So it's been a couple years since he's been starting bullying her. He has finally realized his reason as to why Allie stopped talking to him. And um, boy, does this man try to grovel his butt off. This was super fun. It's the only bully romance I want to say that I actually liked. I kind of liked Punk 57, but like this one, I feel like I loved way more than Punk 57. This is a great one by Jessica Kane. One of the ones I could put on my favorites list by her for sure. The ending though was a little bit too abrupt for me. So that's why I ended up giving it four stars instead of five. There is a trigger warning in here for domestic abuse. So just be aware of that. The tropes in here, you have a brooding hero. It's a bully romance. There's a damaged heroine. It's different social classes. The heroine is rich while the hero is poor. He thinks that is the reason why they're not talking anymore, but it is not. The hero ends up falling first for her. It's on Kindle Unlimited and it is a novella. And the last book that I ended up reading in December was How to Pursue a Princess by Karen Hawkins. This is the second book to How to Capture Countess. And oh my gosh, this one was so good too. I loved this hero. This hero was so cute and sweet. Um, this is a romance between Lily Balfour, the younger sister of the heroine from this book here, um, and Prussian Prince Pieter Volvinsky. So she calls him Volvinsky. Uh, Lily has decided to go to go to her godmother's week long house party in order to find a rich man to marry since her family is almost in financial ruin. But when she's there, she kind of starts falling for Prince Wolf, but Wolf claims that he is a destitute prince, like he doesn't have any money. So he unfortunately would not be able to help her with her financial struggles. Lily has to search for another man then, even though she has deep feelings for Wolf, she has to do her family family duty. Like she needs to marry for money. But what Wolf isn't telling Lily is that he is not poor at all. He's just saying to people that he is poor because he wants a woman to fall in love with him for who he truly is and not his money and his prince title. So the two of them end up falling in love with each other. There's schemes going on, very similar to this book. Uh, there's meddlesome family members. The pugs are in here again um, because this series all takes place at this godmother's house and she is the Duchess. So it's called the Duchess Diaries series. So the Duchess is like meddling in their love lives and making them come together. I wish this book was longer so we could read more about Wolf and Lily. Um, but I loved this one, honestly. Tropes in here, there's books with pets again, the pugs, it's forbidden. There's great banter, the hero falls first. It's a historical romance. Uh, the hero is royalty, he's a Prussian prince and it is in a sibling series. I of course gave this book a five out of five stars and I feel like book three that I'm reading right now is on the track to be 
the third five star. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are all of the books that I ended up reading in December of 2021. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Thank you.